There are so many things to say about Kerry McGuire. He is a true Texas character. He has been full of life from his early days as an entrepreneur, as a Texas oil man. He's bold, he's brassy, he tells you what he thinks. It's hard to imagine where he got his passion and his drive for ethics. But he spent millions of dollars in lawsuits to defend principle, lawsuits that his lawyers advised him that perhaps he should just drop. But for him, it's a matter of integrity. It's doing it for the right thing. One of the things that we love about Kerry Maguire is that he stands on principle. One of the great things about Kerry Maguire is he's not an alum, he went to Penn, but like so many people that are involved with SMU, he believes it's important for Dallas. He, thinks the institution's important, he has a great feel for it, and so he really devotes his time and money uh, to the university. Kerry McGuire was the first person to really feel like that ethical education should be pervasive within the university. Kerry got active to develop a center to be able to address that and to make it something that could affect the whole university. He had hoped, and his vision was, that every class, every student who went through SMU would have at least one class in ethics. And I think history will show. Kerry McGuire has been the flag bearer for ethics on the SMU campus. He has had a major, major impact on the university, on the city, and beyond the city. I was the Dean of the, uh, the um, interim dean of the business school at SMU, and I was sitting at my desk, and I got a phone call, and it was Ed Cox. And he said, I want you to call a friend of mine, his name is Kerry McGuire, I think he wants to make a contribution to the school of business. And I said, I'll do that immediately. I hung up the phone, I called him, I said, Mr. McGuire, my name is Bobby Lyle, I'm the dean of the business school. I said, Mr. McGuire, we are in the process of putting together institutes within the School of Business that are going to align themselves with different uh, industry sectors. And he said, well, what would that cost? And I told him, he said, that's exactly what I had in mind. He said, uh, this was, again, this was on a Friday afternoon, it was about 2 o'clock. He said, do you think that you could bring me next week sometime a proposal? And I said, Mr. McGuire, if you will tell me where you live, I will have a proposal at your home at 6 o'clock this afternoon. And he said, are you kidding? I said, no, sir, I'll be there. This was on the 15th of December. So 6 o'clock that evening, I arrived at his home and rang his doorbell, and his wife, Ann, who later became a very dear friend as well, answered the door. I'd never met either one of them. And I told her who I was and I said, is Mr. McGuire there or at home? And she said, yes, he is, but he's taking a nap. I said, well, would you mind giving him this proposal? And, and I, she closed the door and, and left, I left. And I thought, well, okay, he's, he probably isn't taking a nap. He probably thought about this. He really doesn't want to do it. And I'll never hear from him again. And so I left. And on the 31st of December, I got a call from him. Can you come down to my office? I have some stock certificates I want to give you to fund the McGuire Institute for Oil and Gas. I went to the office, picked up the stock certificates, and that was his first gift that he ever made to SMU. And since that time, he has been incredibly generous. You know, there's a building in the business school named after him. There are several endowed chairs that are named in his honor that he's funded. There are scholarships. There's the, not only the Institute for Oil and Gas, but the McGuire Ethics Center as well. Ann used to tell me on more than one occasion that was the most expensive opening of a door I've ever had in my life. If I had had good sense, I would never have come to the door. Carrie, I can think of so many times when you and I have sat down to talk, and we always share a laugh before we got down to the business at hand. Your sense of humor, your perspective, and your drive certainly have inspired me. I am so thankful and grateful that you endowed the directorship of this center and that because of your financial generosity for generations to come, SMU will still be focused on ethics and our public responsibility. We love you. 
The relationship that you and I have had that date back to the very early 70s when we first started doing things together at SMU through today have been phenomenal. Your financial gifts, the time that you've spent, particularly in the area of ethics and the creation of the Ethics Center and the number of faculty members, outstanding faculty members like Robin Lovin and Bill May that you've helped bring into the discussion of, of ethics is just unbelievable and is a legacy that uh, no other uh, will ever be able to, uh, to duplicate. I love you and I appreciate you for all that you've done, not just for the SMU, but for the Dallas community and for the country. So thank you, my friend, for all that you've done.